Netherlands has asked a very awesome question. Hello, Chad. You've asked if a leopard territory, and they are very territorial, if a leopard in its territory has all its territory burnt and all the animals run away because they want to escape the flames, would that leopard go and trespass on another leopard's territory so that it could eat? And the answer to that question is yes, yes, absolutely. He would do that. He would go to adjacent property to go and eat. But I have seen the bush recover incredibly quickly. Literally 12 hours after fire, you can start to see grass shoots coming through and animals very quickly return back to their places again. And therefore the leopard will come back to, his, uh, to their original place as well. So yes, they would. Their home ranges are very fluid. Their boundaries of their home ranges are very fluid. This monitor lizard has walked straight past. Monitor lizard has walked straight past the dam and just carried on going. He's obviously going somewhere with an absolute mission. You can see the trail going all the way up the road. Even on top of the speed bump, on top there, you can see where he's gone there. So Ocean wants to know, Ocean from Oregon, wants to know, um, is it true that Rhino stamp on fire? Uh, now Ocean, I must say that I watched the same movie you did. I think it was a movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy, where the rhino came barreling out of the bush and chased two people camping in the bush and stamped on their fire. And uh, although I find the movie very amusing, it's one of my wife and I's favorite movies. I have to say that I think that was a bit of comedic license being taken. Uh, I don't actually think that, uh, that rhinos, I've never seen rhinos stamp on fire. I have seen them on green shoots, even with smoking lobs, um, literally uh, still smoking around them. And I've even seen them walk around flames and come onto the hot ash behind it, like literally not really caring about fire at all, but actually stamping on fire, no, I haven't seen that. Now, um, while we're speaking about rhino, I thought it would be a good opportunity just for us to say to everybody, both old viewers and new, why we don't show rhino, even though there are a lot of rhino in the Sabi Sands and in the Kruger National Park. The reason why we don't show rhino is that it could be used as a tool for rhino poachers and we don't really want to give them any more help at all. So we choose not to show rhinos, therefore we don't broadcast their location and therefore they stay safe and we stay disassociated with it. We're very very active in anti-rhino poaching campaigns. Um, and and we all take a very firm stand, we don't like it at all, but we don't show them on broadcast for the fact that we don't want to give poachers any hand that they can have, or any upper hand that they can have at least. Now on that somber note, we're still busy looking for this male lion. Myself and VM heard him roar for the last time at around about 8 o'clock this morning. And he was roaring from around about this area. If I were to give a pinpoint of where I think this lion would be, it would be in the area where we are right now. I'm just driving slowly here. Quite tough with the car on to actually hear what's going on. But lions generally don't start moving until the sun is set. And as you can see, the sun is far from setting at the moment. So 
Joyce from Pennsylvania has just asked what Lion Coalition covers Torchwood? That's a good question Joyce, I don't actually know the answer to that question and I do know though that some of our long-term viewers keep a very firm understanding of what lions hold what territories and where in this part of the Sabi Sand and I'd like to throw that question back at some of our, our viewers, our long-time viewers who actually have that knowledge would you please let us know what coalition is currently the dominant coalition, lion terms, in Torchwood? Ah. What a shy antelope, one of the dwarf antelope. VM just spotted him. There we go, nice, we're getting him. Ah. Very tough to actually get those guys on form. I'm glad that you got to see even just a glimpse of it. That was a common or a grey dacre. One of the dwarf antelope that occur here. A daker are a fascinating, truly fascinating family of, of antelope. They're very primitive in terms of their physiology. I'm actually going to enlist the help of Mr. Jonathan Kingdom, Kingdon, a naturalist from the 1960s, to show you just how diverse the dakers are. I do know that uh, Brent has a big love of dakers. 367 I'm going to page through over here so that you can see how many dakers we have in Africa there's one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 different species, distinctly different species of dacre that occur in Africa, a very, very diverse genus of animals. And very primitive they've got quite primitive digestive systems they're not quite ruminants they're not quite hindgut fermenters in actual fact don't have four portions to the tummy they've got three but they can digest a very wide range of plants including some very poisonous plants and they was also been known to hunt it's not uncommon to see dacre hitting to death <coughs> with their front hooves mice and lizards and eating them they even eat eggs can you believe it eggs of Franklin and guinea fowl that they find on the floor they'll eat so a very it's an antelope species that although primitive is very robust or adaptable able to adapt to a wide range of conditions and so the great dacre does quite well over here in the Sabi sands on that note we are going to carry on driving On looking for this male line. Myself and Viam, we were driving around all through here today. There's lion tracks literally everywhere, and this afternoon, from a similar time frame last night, we saw that the lions had basically covered the entire western section or eastern section of the, excuse me, I'm a bit dyslexic today <laughs> so Bree on Twitter has asked what happens to territories, does it become a free-for-all after fire and do animals have to re-establish those territories and can they change, I suppose, would be the addition to that. Bri, I'd have to say that no, they don't change. The animals don't run away. It's not that big. They definitely re-establish boundaries. Absolutely. And you find quite a heightened period of activity there. 
straight after big rains, straight after fire, you find animals re-establishing territorial boundaries. Thanks, Bree. Now I want to show you something interesting over here. This tree that we've got on our left-hand side has been killed years ago, or pushed down years ago by elephant. And what's happened is it's been lying on its left-hand side, the flat side. The tree has been lying on that side. And it's been lying on the ground. And what's happened is over the years, the wind has carried lots of grass seeds into this tree, which have got tangled in the, in the, in the branches and have fallen and have germinated under the tree in relative safety from browsers that want to come and or grazers that want to come and eat it. I just want to ask VM to pan down onto the grass, which is very evidently much better condition than the grass just next to it. Now, why is this tree being lifted up is the question. What's happened here is a very clever elephant has come along and has realized that better grass lives underneath the tree that he pushed down and he's tipped the tree over with his trunk and his tusks and he's fed a little bit on the grass that has occurred underneath this tree. Isn't it just fascinating? A sign. Now elephants are known as keystone species and although that is going to take me many months and I look forward to explaining keystone species one of the roles of a keystone species is to facilitate or to anchor an ecosystem. And in this particular case, an elephant has pushed a tree down so that he can feed at the top of the leaves. He's then created a tree on the ground which has allowed other, browse, other browsers to come and utilize a resource of leaves that they never had access to. As the trees then died, it's created a seed bank. And a seed bank is very important for the diversity and the spread of seeds. A seed bank is a safe zone where, where plants and seeds can germinate away from mouths that eat them. In this particular case, years later, after those, those trees and plants, in this case grass, have germinated and spread their seed, an elephant has come along again, lifted up his seed bank and utilized the grass underneath real fascinating story, a real nice story about um, a food chain or a food web and a keystone species being elephant. Another keystone species that we have out here is hippopotamus, but we are not going to talk about that just yet. I want to show you that. There are quite a nice sign that we saw there. That was quite rare to see. It's nice to know. The sun is starting to get lower and lower at the moment. I do want to go and check another dam in the area. For VM and I, the dams so far have been, I've actually been quite surprised at the lack of activity around. I know we got lion tracks going this way again. Oh, I'll tell you, these lions have been walking circles around. This is a female lion, so not the male lion that was roaring. Coming from Treehouse Dam last night. We're going to go and have a look at the dam anyway. Uh, these dams haven't been a source of luck for Vium and I, and I've been quite surprised. You know, this time of year, watering holes and water points actually form focal points for animal movement. But I think that the frequency and the spread of dams here in the Sabi Sands is actually quite wide. And the animals are spoiled for choice. And sometimes they come to these and sometimes they don't. Yeah. Easy as that. Oof. Oh, I got bothered by another fly here. We pick these things up as we go through the bush. They're attracted by movement. Obviously, we look like a big juicy animal to, on the way past. And they then attach themselves to us. Until we wave them off and get our next wave of flies. Drive me mad. Fortunately, with my bald head, I feel them land on my head almost instantly. 
and my big ears collect them like big scoops. I'm not surprised that we don't have much general game on Juma at the moment with all the lions that we've had at the moment and everything. I would also run away if I was a prey species here. How do we do game drives in the wet season when all we have is rain and mud everywhere? And I must say that uh, I do it with, uh, we do it with difficulty, we still do game drives. We still, I'm just waving at another colleague of ours. We still do game drives in the rain. Obviously with our sensitive equipment that we have, it's difficult to do drives in very heavy rain. Because we really damage the, the equipment that we have. But when I was a commercial field guide, we did, ra we did uh, drives in rain, hard rain, flood rain, drought, fire. We don't switch off the game drives. Nice sunset through the smoke clouds, which is giving it that yellowy tinge. And while VM and I enjoy the sunset further, I think Jamie's got some news for you. And we're going to link back to Jamie. Welcome back guys. So while I was wandering around the drainage line looking if I could locate Sandile, Shadow's cub, I actually got the news that he has in fact been found. So he really was on the move from where he was last seen to where he is now. So we can't rush straight there because there are a couple of other vehicles ahead of me in the queue. So for now we're just going to take it a little bit sedately and wait until the guys give me a shout to let me know that I'm welcome to join that sighting. Very interestingly, while I was walking through the drainage line, I disturbed what looked like two spotted eagle owls and they shot out from the tree that they were sleeping in and ever since then the grey go away birds and the hornbills have been going absolutely insane, shouting and letting the whole world know that these owls are out and about when they really shouldn't be. They seem to have quietened down now. So for now, let's hit the road and start heading a bit closer towards that sighting of Sindile. And I will have my radio turned up nice and loud so I can hear when they want me to join them. It's always very valuable to respect the other guides, especially since in this case they were the ones who found the leopard. So it's very important that the guests that are on their vehicle all get a chance to see whatever animal or whatever sighting they've encountered. And it's also very important that you don't have too many stations at the same animal sighting. Otherwise you run the risk of stressing out the animal. So there are very, very strict rules about standing by in a queue if a lot of people want to come and see it. So the way that it will work is the first person to find the animal is in charge of that sighting and he will then he or she will then control who comes and goes from that sighting and it's usually very respectful just to make sure that everybody has a, doesn't abuse that and doesn't spend too long so that everybody gets a chance the nice thing for us is that we've got potentially as much time as we need right up until the end of the show to see the leopard whereas these guys are under a little bit of time pressure so often they don't spend as long as we might get to which is why i'm quite happy to sit back and wait and wait 
Frau turn to get to see him. Unfortunately, the only risk with that, of course, is that he crosses a boundary or disappears into some thick bush. It's a different route. Oh, brilliant. So we've got a leopard in the road. Thank you, Andrew. We don't need to worry about that sighting because we have our own. not sure about the identity of this little leopard and I'm sure that there are some people out there who do know I just want to put my car into low range so that we don't disturb it too much with the high revs and I can just coast quietly along behind it I just want to have a quick look with some binos Awesome guys, this is so exciting and it's such a treat for me to work in an area where the leopards are as habituated and relaxed around vehicles as they are here in the Sabi Sands. They've had at least 40 years worth of time and generations worth of leopards that have been habituated to cars moving through their area. I'm just going to let the other game drives channels know what I've found. Yeah, standing by, I've actually just got one Ingui here on the road, uh, Mobile East. I think it's the it's the road from Red Dam. It's just past Parallel 4. I'm not sure of its exact name. Yeah, that's affirmative. You're more than welcome. Leopard. Guys, I'm very, very keen to hear who you think this leopard is. That's very exciting for me. Is my first leopard when working for Wild Earth. This looks very much to me like a cub and possibly the Sindile who I was looking for. And he has popped out right onto the road exactly where I was walking only a couple of minutes earlier. So he probably watched me walk straight past him. I stand corrected very tiny female most of the viewers are telling me that this is in fact shadow so guys what do you think he had is a situation with converging sightings.
actually hear him calling to her. Here he comes. Absolutely beautiful sign of affection there between mother and son. catch them in that gap. <laughs> Getting a little bit too playful there. Guys, what a treat this is for me. My first time seeing Shadow and Sindile. And I'm so happy to be able to share it with all of you. It's very, very exciting. As I was explaining to you guys a little bit earlier, there is a quite a strict control system in terms of sightings. But what's happened here has been interesting because my sighting of Shadow converged with theirs, with their sighting of Sindile. So as far as I could tell, there are only three of us here at the moment, so we're not breaking any rules. But I do think that they were a little bit surprised to see me. Now we can't have too many vehicles crashing through the bush after these leopards so I'm going to loop around and see if I can catch them on the other side of this block and leave it to these guys to follow them through 
I don't think that all three of us trying to push through after leopards, and none of us are going to get a very good view. Oh, I think they stopped in here. No, they're still moving through the block. So I have a comment from Linda who suggests that Shadow may be leading some Sundile to a kill since this is the only time in her observation that Shadow really seeks Sundile out and that is more than possible. Leopards, leopard mothers do hide their cubs away for extended periods of time until they manage to until they manage to kill something and then they will go back and fetch their cub and then take the cub to the kill. I'm going to loop around the block. And just catch up with him on the cut line. So I'm going to drive a little bit faster just to get to see them. But still really, really awesome sighting. I'm so excited that we got to see them for the first time, or at least my first time today. I was really holding thumbs, so it appears to have paid off. Sorry, Andrew, I'm gonna hold on just as we loop around. rugby early last week so I know roughly where the roads go tail just disappearing that side. I definitely saw a second coming through. I will be back with you as soon as possible so that we can get a nice view of these leopards and hopefully make some plans with these guides to follow up. Welcome back everybody to uh, a beautiful sunset. VM and I decided that we'd show it to you as the sun sets on VM, VM's birthday.
we just got some lovely colors here we've got the green of the algae we've got the sun red and purple behind those smoke clouds the bush starting to go into grays and browns just such a lovely sunset to share with you well i hear you've been also very glad that you get to see her I think I was mentioning it this morning to everybody how in our busy lives we don't really take enough time to visit and watch the sunset and the sunrise and this morning we or today we've been privileged to have both we've been privileged to sit and appreciate both the sunrise and the sunset and the change that it brings are we seeing this pan that's in front of us now treehouse pan is almost finished I don't think that there's much more than a week or two of water left at most. But then that is exactly what must happen. Look at that sun going down. So Gert in the Netherlands has actually pitched an interesting answer, well, asked a good question. Will the closing down of the watering holes in the Kruger National Park force more elephant into the private reserves that actually pump their watering holes? And I can only imagine that that answer would be yes, Gert. Now, I hear that the leopard is running away. You need to get there as quickly as possible. Over to Jamie. Enjoy. Welcome back guys and as luck would have it they have crossed over the boundary of Arethusa but into Juma side so we have these guys all to ourselves I'm not entirely sure where the second one has vanished to it is quite a thick block but I'm gonna try and stay with this one as long as possible something appears to be happening very very If they are hunting, I have to be very careful about the way that I push through to see them because I really, really do not want to disturb or interrupt or in any way compromise their hunt if this is what they're doing. So we've had several comments from Kay, Smiles for Wraith and Natasha mentioning that Sindile looks like he's grown a great deal. He's almost reached the same size as his mother Shadow and I can't really comment too much on that. This is the first time I've ever seen him but I will take you guys at your word 
and he is looking very big. I understand that he's nearly close to a year old now from what I can see. So he looks to me to be roughly between 10 months to 12 months old. And he's still got quite a long time before he is fully independent from his mother. Some leopard uh, cubs take a little bit longer than others. Usually the males become independent a little bit sooner, a little bit faster than the female cubs might. But he's probably at least got six months still being dependent or at least associating with his mom. And that very much looks like stalking posture to me. And potentially waiting to see whatever is happening in the front there. Now just cleaning himself off. Since he has relaxed like that, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer just to see what he's up to. See what he's up to. I want to put my car right between them just because I don't think that's very polite. So it is very thick in this block and it is a bit tricky maneuvering around. But I still would like to be able to see at least one of them clearly. I'm going to just shift around. Try and so that I'm not cutting them off from each other. I don't think that they would be too concerned by it. These guys are incredibly habituated and very used to cars coming and going and stopping to have a look at them. But I just want to do things in a more appropriate manner. We just listen very carefully, you might hear her calling to him. Really beautiful signs of affection between mother and cub. to have seen this pair for the first time and try and take the easiest route but unfortunately in this block there isn't really an easy route
little bit of playfulness between mother and son. helpful. to the road because I feel like if I off-road too much further I'm actually going to just be pushing <laughs> Absolutely perfect. A little bit of scent marking there on the tree. So guys, we've got the most perfect picture of these two on a tree. Please take plenty of screenshots for, of this beautiful image and sh feel free to share them with us. You can share them at hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. You can also email them through to us at questions at wildearth.tv. Really stunning visuals. Leopards in trees, the iconic image of a leopard. They are such incredibly agile climbers. Try and stay with them, they are moving towards the road. somewhat doubtful. How are we doing on that side? We're good. We're good. <laughs> well okay, well, we shall see how long that lasts. I'm sure we're going to have a flat tire after that. But we can hold thumbs, you never know.
Yeah, stations, if anyone's still interested, these two Ingwe are now back onto the cut line. Mobile East. Apology station, we're about south towards the various signposts. Copy that, you're more than welcome. They're just cutting into this block now. I'll keep visual. Yeah, they're now mobile southwest into the block off the cut line. Sorry guys, just keeping everybody updated. I think she is gonna come back onto the road. They are playing with each other. They don't seem to be too determined. So they haven't picked a specific direction and are walking consistently in it. They're just crisscrossing around. I just wanna Double check exactly where we are just so that I can let the other vehicles know. I'll leave you with that beautiful image. Yeah, standing by. They're actually crossing backwards and forwards onto Triple M. Uh, the Mofuzzi is now mobile south. Um, we're still with the uh, Bantuan here. now she is there you go shadow off down the road Just 
play with a little blade of grass. Let me shift slightly. So I'm fairly certain that Shadow is actually hunting at this point. She seems to be crisscrossing through fairly aimlessly and she's just been very alert and ducked into the block off to my right. But I think we're going to try and stay with Sindile here. He's potentially going to follow his mom. giving himself a little bit of extra height just so he could try and see where his mother's gone. You can actually hear him calling for his mom just trying to figure out which way she's gone. He was too busy playing with the grass to actually notice. just listening intently to another game drive vehicle approaching. I'm still marveling at the fact that he popped out onto the road almost exactly where I did when I heard that they'd found a leopard already or at least shadow popped out onto the road. Quite incredible. I did not see anything. And I'm sure a lot of you have noticed when there is a leopard in the grass, if you've ever seen it, it almost disappears completely. So much so that if somebody didn't point it out, you would not even know it was there. He's still looking around. You can see he's calling, but very, very softly for his mother. I don't think you guys will be able to hear it. truly beautiful light colored eyes that he has highlighted underneath each one by a nice light stripe and that's to help with his night vision so when the moonlight or whatever other ambient light he can pick up at night is shining onto it it reflects off that light patch underneath his eyes and then the backs of the ears He's 
still looking for his mum, looking off, looking off in the direction that he last saw her. And I think she might have just decided she was not in the mood to deal with his playfulness. She wanted to go and hunt. And so she took the opportunity while he was distracted with the grass to just... disappear off. So a very good question from Linda as to why Sindile seems to be a little bit confused. And Linda wants to know why he couldn't just follow her scent. And it is true that he would know her scent very, very well. He'd be very bonded to it. However, I think the fact that this is a main cut line with plenty of vehicle traffic may well have interfered with that particular sense of smell. It's also a little bit of a light breeze which might be blowing her smell away more so than normal. And it might also just be his leopard cub instinct to stay put. So he's kind of tossing up between following on behind her and staying in hiding when waiting for her to come and fetch him. And I think he's gone with... for mum to come and find him. Absolutely spectacular image in this wonderful setting sunlight. I will shift forward slightly for you guys just so we can get a better angle, but there, there is another car, so you guys will get the clicking of their cameras as well as the sounds of the bush. Just crossed in front of me. There's now a vehicle on the way. And yes, there she is. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Shadow just crossed in front. She did walk down that way and then into the block there. Sorry, just chatting to the other guides. So Shadow is crisscrossing a great deal. So I think that potentially she is hunting. I think she's just exploring the area and seeing what's out and about. And she doesn't want to do that with a young and inexperienced cub following her around, potentially messing up any hunting attempts that she might make. So I can't actually see her now. I think she might have crossed through into the block on the other side of the road. We do have a couple of vehicles coming through. So if a third one does come to approach, then it's just good manners for me to leave the sighting and give the other guys a chance. We have had a really, really wonderful time with them. But for now, we're fine. There's just three of us here, but I will let you guys know if we do have to move out of the sighting. I'm just going to shift slightly so that we've got an even better view just as soon as this vehicle has stopped.
bright. So guys, I hear that you took my request pretty seriously and that you're all sharing some of the screenshots from the amazing sighting that we've had this afternoon. Thank you very, very much, guys. I'm really keen on looking at those and having a look through, especially since I've been so busy following these guys and keeping up with them that I haven't had any opportunities to take pictures for myself. So I'd love to have to, to have a look through them later. And I do have some very special plans for the screenshots that you guys do take. I'm going to get you guys to help me build up a database of all of the different animals. But before I do tell you too much about that, I will actually save that for the fireside chat tomorrow evening. So if you guys want to hear more about that, then tune in tomorrow evening and we can chat a little bit about the plans that I have and some of VM's plans as well. Beautiful profile. Always alert. And you'll find the backs having black ears highlighted by those black dark colors. It's very common in a lot of different species of animals from lions to impala. And most of it is to do with visual cues, so visual communication. These animals can't talk to each other in a way that we necessarily understand but they do definitely communicate in one way or another and most important in the body language repertoire so in the body language vocabulary is the movement of the ears and the movement of the tail and i'm sure a lot of you guys know that from a swishing tail of a cat that is either playful or angry or a dog's ears that are a great deal which why, is why it makes sense for nature to have highlighted them in that dark color that stands out. So, been a very special day for me today. My first cheeto on Sabi Sands this morning and my first leopards this afternoon. Very, very exciting day. And the beautiful colors of the sunset also brought out by that fire that is to the west of us it's bringing in some haziness to the area
So leopards are one of the most extraordinary animals that there are out in this. If you can imagine a young female leopard somewhere in the region of 45 to 50 kilograms, so 100 to maybe 110 pounds, able to drag an impala that is roughly her weight, maybe potentially even heavier, up a tree using only her claws and holding it in her mouth, you get something of an idea of how incredibly powerful these animals can really be. And they can be unbelievably dangerous if cornered or encountered, but for the most part, they just tend to avoid all contact and all conflict rather than risk any kind of confrontation. And they've got that perfect camouflage that helps them to do that. All they really have to do is move away a couple of meters and just crouch down and they disappear almost completely into the bush. So, interesting observation from Mavis, who is sort of questioning the fact that leopards don't hang around too much. Ooh. Something in the sky that gave him a fright there. I'm not sure exactly what it was. It wasn't to do with anything with the vehicles or the people because he actually looked upwards before he dashed off. I'm just going to move backwards slightly, see if we can get another visual of him. But I think, guys, shortly, it might be time to... There he is. guys have found their position just so that we don't have too many cars bombarding him with their engines on at the same time so sorry to get back to Mavis's observation so Mavis was wondering Mavis was wondering why it is that leopards don't and I think we might be saying goodbye to Sindile because if he does disappear off into this block, I'm going to give the other guides a chance to actually see him for a little bit longer. We have seen plenty of him, and three of us crashing around in this block is not going to make life very easy. He's still just visible between the sticks there, but he is going to move off. So I'm going to attempt for a third time to try and answer Mavis's observation. And Mavis's observation was that she was surprised that leopards don't spend more time around the water holes, especially in this dry season when the prey is coming there automatically, um, or at least is forced to come to that area. Well, Mavis, it's an interesting observation, but the one animal that is spending quite a lot of time around the water holes, as we have seen fairly recently, is the lions. So although it might seem like a good idea for a leopard, and they probably do spend more time around the water holes than not, they also want to stay avoiding the lions as much as possible. It's also the same reason that you don't get a very, you get an increased concentration of prey items around the water hole, but not all of them around. So I think the leopards probably stay away, mainly to stay out of conflict with the lions. They're also very well adapted to hunting in all kinds of different environments. So, Granny, Billy Joe from Florida, Welcome to the Sunset Safari. I'm so glad we could share that awesome sighting with you. So first of all, she would like to compliment Andrew on his fantastic camera work, and I second that. There's some really awesome shots in that. And secondly, what is the second point? 
I would like to guess, just had a brain freeze for a moment, would just, would, has asked me whether I could put a rough estimate in terms of height and weight of Sindile. So, s roughly the height would be, I would say, not very tall at all, maybe around 50 to 60 centimeters, which I cannot convert into inches. I'm not entirely sure. Um, my conversion rates into Imperial are not fantastically accurate. And in terms of weight, he's, he won't weigh very much at the moment, probably in the region of at most 30 kilograms, but I would say potentially even less. I have a dog that is roughly the same size and she weighs at the moment about 25 kilograms but she's much less potentially much less muscly than he is so we're talking in that sort of region so 25 kilograms is about just over 50 pounds if my conversions are on spot that's something i might have to brush up on all right guys he has moved off into this block and i don't think we're going to be able to follow Just before I leave, I'll deal with a quick question from Ocean, Oregon. Welcome to the Sunrise Safari. I really hope that you enjoyed that amazing time that we had with those leopards. And they would like to know if, if leopards can sleep in trees. And the answer is yes, they can and do very regularly. They do favor certain types of trees. So that beautiful tree that Andrew had in our wide shot earlier with um, the silhouette of Sindile, so that fantastic, I think it's a marula tree, it could be a false marula tree, it's a little bit dark to see. But they tend to favor nice big trees with thick branches and no thorns. And that is often where you will find them. That doesn't mean that they can't climb other trees, it just means that they favor certain types. And that of course makes total sense. If you're going to go climbing up and you know you're safe up there, you'd rather avoid thick foliage and scratchy thorns. So guys, I would say that that is it for our Sindile and shadow sighting. In fact, even the other vehicle has decided that following him into the block might be a little bit more tricky than they intend to take on. And I fully understand why following a leopard in the dark in what is essentially a combination of monkey thorn and zebra wood is fairly difficult. So they won't be following up either. But it has been an incredibly exciting afternoon for me. Not only did I get to explore a totally new area and not really get that lost, or at least not as lost as I expected to be at any point, but I got to see Shadow and Sindile for the first time ever, or at least my first time. And it's really awesome that I got to share that entire experience with all of you guys. I'm really, really excited. It has been I woke up this morning with a feeling that it was going to be a very, very good day. And indeed, that has proved to be true from the Matimba male this morning and the cheetah right down to seeing that gorgeous shadow who is so incredibly graceful and her playful little cub, Sindile. So I think that is quite a good afternoon. You've done fairly well and it's all another hard day in Africa. So for now, I am going to enjoy this incredible sunset and I'm going to send you guys back to Steph. But thank you to everyone at FC, to Tara and to Kirsty and to Andrew for all his fantastic camera work. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning at the Sunrise Safari. Like that, like triangle. Well, I hear you've been having a fantastic time with Sindile on top of a termite mound with mom. How awesome is that? What a fantastic day. 
We really have had an awesome day today. Jam packed with lion, leopard. I haven't seen any elephant or any buffalo today, I don't think. But awesome sightings nonetheless. Some good birds this morning. Some bizarre things this afternoon. Some interesting chats along the way. And have a look at the sky just to close off. I mean, isn't that the most amazing sighting where we have the moon, Mars and Venus all together in that triangle with the smoke and the red sky and everything it just really is very very pretty no other star well one or two other stars out right now but those are definitely the most prominent and definitely something that I haven't seen and I actually don't remember when the last time I saw something like that to be quite honest really really beautiful um, myself and VM have really had a nice day today a very relaxed day to be quite honest uh, Jamie seems to have found everything around us today and good for her I think uh, she's definitely had the luck uh, with her today and what are we going to do tomorrow that's a good question there's uh, one of those things where you don't really know what you're going to do tomorrow we've got no static sightings which means that we don't have a predetermined plan to go out somewhere tomorrow we uh, we're just going to be following our noses, basically, similar to what we did today. Got that brilliant smoke cloud that's still drifting over the horizon from that fire in the Kruger National Park. Coloring the sky a brown, orangey color, quite weird. And then moving over into that greeny blue color just before you get that moon, Mars and Venus triangle. And as you can see from the moon, a little bit bigger than what it was yesterday. So we have got a waxing moon. Tomorrow night, that moon will rise 45 minutes later than it did today. And it won't, won't be in the same position as it is now. So this is a once off. You're not going to see the moon in this position with that fancy, very, very unique and to be quite honest, astounding feature in the sky I'm just really enjoying the view from myself Stefan and VM from Jamie and Andrew and from Tara and Final Control we really wish you a very pleasant day wherever you are we're gonna have a good night and uh, we're going to be ready to go tomorrow. Um, I bid you good night. Wish you a good day. And see you soon.